Man, probably a fun fact on me is that I like to read. Like I, I, I like to read. That's 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 a lost art nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my great uncle is uh, Jesse Owens. He won four gold medals in 1936. Yeah. I always want to leave people with this, man, to all the viewers and everybody out there, man. Make sure you guys finish the story. Make sure you guys finish your journey because somebody's going to need it. Yeah. All you got to do is push the bad button. That's all you got to do is push the bad button. <laughs> Try not to think about the future too much so you can maximize the now. Who the favorite rap artist? Man, to be honest, it's crazy. Tupac always been my number one, right? Like he got, got people, so, he got he got people so much stuff, but Lil Wayne has been in the modern day. I said, "What does it really take? What does it really take to be great, Drew?" And he looked at me. He was like, "You really want to know?" And he was like, "To be honest, everything you did to get here, you need to be consistent times ten. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? It's your boy, Coach Lee. Happy hump day to you. Happy Wednesday night. Three days away from the weekend. Back at it like we're mad at it. We coming off a fire-ass show we had last night. Hung out with our guy, Chris. Shout out to you, man. You did your damn thing last night. Schooled us on a lot of stuff, man. You are a wrestling walking encyclopedia. But regardless, we back here on the Parlay Perspective tonight. Appreciate you hanging out with your boy. Let's get the crew up in here. My man back here in the background. He rocking. He boxing. He ready to come here and get some body blows in this bitch. Let's get my guy up in here, man. He's going by what? Pat Bell. Why? Wow. Bro, oh, tonight. One night only. You know what I'm saying? Pat Bell. What, man? Y'all know how it is, man. I play like Ron Meta. That's why I call myself Meta. And I play like Pat Bev, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming I'm coming for your neck. Um, it's Paul A. Perspective, man. It's Wednesday night. Everybody know what it is. John Witherspoon it. Bang, bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? Craig's Pops. You know, if you know, you know. We're here tonight. Give our perspective on a lot of the topics in sports. Coach invited me. Nah, I stepped through. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do out here. My man right here? Nah, if you thought I stepped through, this man this man said, I ain't going out like Martin Luther King. I ain't preaching nothing. I'm just going to tell you. And it happened. My man from the South, Massachusetts, my guy. He's from the Bean, though. He just lived there. It's living cozy. But you're here tonight. My guy, Chili Will in the building. What's the word? You muted, man. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. He don't want to hang out with us tonight. He did two hours. If everybody don't know, you know, back in the day, you know, when I'm when I was making introductions to the show. It was exactly like that with me. Will's going through tough times right now. It's okay. He'll be back in a couple of seconds. Whenever you want to come back, Will, just bring yourself in, man. So um, it's Wednesday, man. Coach, hey, you, yeah. always say, you always say two days to the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Make it almost a day to the weekend because it's almost midnight. That's true. In some places. Um, but we here tonight. Like, share, and subscribe, STWF TV, man. If you're on Facebook, holler at us, man. Twitch, holler at us, man. You're on YouTube, just, you know, strolling in. Take a break from Charleston White. You know what I'm saying? Tune in to us. You oh, know? God. <laughs> Telling you, man, that that is – I watched the whole – that's how crazy it is. I, like, literally in there, just enjoying myself. Coach, man, like I said the other day, man, appreciate you all sitting there because that was – some entertainment and, and, and some real talk. Y'all had to have a good laugh. Good laugh. God, real talk. It was some. It was some stuff that I didn't agree with. It's some stuff I did agree with. But overall, from beginning to end, I rolled. <laughs> <laughs> he was out of his mind. <laughs> but man, so how y'all day been today, fellas? Been cool, man. Chilling. You know, Chilling. had Tristan Cass at my job today. I think that's his name, right? Red Sox. First baseman? Oh, Casas, yeah. Casas? Oh, yeah. Had, my, had, him, had him at the Boys and Girls Club today. Shout out to the rest of the organization and Wally for coming in today. You know what I'm saying? Oh, teaching Wally was there? Some, yep, teaching the kids some fundamentals yeah. about baseball, you know, playing and participating in all my activities. And actually served some of the dinner I helped make. So, in all, man, help shout out to him. Gave me a break for a half an hour. You, you know, go. paid for. <laughs> you know, so, you know how that rolled. So, it, it, it was great. It was great, though. Shout out to him, man. That's what's up, man. 
Y'all ready to get into some sports tonight, man? We got a lot of Let's stuff to go. cover. Yeah. Right off the bat, because I know y'all, I'm going to throw this bomb out there and let y'all work y'all magic. We're going to start with some um, some hardcore right off the bat. Uh-oh. But let me ask y'all. So this one no, is Chris. the NBA and the Vegas relationship. So as we know, the um, with in regards to Vegas, I think the tourney, the the in season tourney, the finals is in Vegas, right? Yes. Yep. The semifinals in the finals is in Vegas. So the reason why I you know I was asking about that is because I know at one point in time it was kind of frowned upon, like no teams were in Vegas. But in the last what? I guess five years, maybe they've had an NFL team, NHL team, WNBA team. So, with, and, and the A's just got approved to move there. <laughs> so, lastly, it's the basketball team. Now, I know there was some rumors, you know, after the, you know, we had talked about Mark Cuban selling the team last week. A lot of people like, he's been taking to Vegas. Nah, they, he cool. But, what up, Bill? I know Adam Silver did say that he did want to expand, and I can possibly see being in Vegas and maybe Seattle getting the team back. But yeah. th- this newfound relationship with Vegas, is this good or bad for the sport? I mean, it's just another market. It wasn't like you were stopping players from gambling anyway. I don't think it makes it worse. So, nope. I agree with that. So I agree with that, Nate. With the expansion of, of gambling, the online gambling and stuff like that, it's socially acceptable now? I, it, yeah, I guess. But also, just what, you can't stop them. Like, you're not going to be able to really stop them. Like, we, we've seen multiple players getting involved with gambling and stuff like that. So, right. the fact that it's becoming legal everywhere, like, you're not going to be able to stop somebody. They can do it from their phone. So, you might as well, might as well put a team, <laughs> team in the league you can make money off of. That's true. That's true. I agree with that. I, I agree with that. Um, hardcore, and to the fact that they have teams already, so it's just like another another team there. And like you said, all I'm the gambling and all that extra stuff is just added up. It's like Vegas is the mecca, but now when you when you're from a state that has sports betting laws, you go to Vegas. You know, you're kind of like you're not an eye no more. It's just regular shit. You know, it's there. So. Um, and all, yeah. If it was years back when there was no team, absolutely. We for years, you know, if a team would have came to Vegas in the NBA wise or any sport twenty years ago, yeah, it would have been some bogus crap. But yeah, like Will said, everything so, it was socially gathered, like you said, Coach, mm-hmm. as well. And now it's kind of just like you know, we're just waiting on different states to get the stamp, and and yeah. states are getting the stamp. So they're finding out people like they gambling. Shake green and whatever vices they may have. <laughs> so, you know, obviously, you know, it's going to happen regardless. So, might as well get their hand in it. A couple of things that I had saw um, as far as like, you know, this relationship expanding because at one point in time, when Stern was still the commissioner, he was like, it'll never happen. Not on my watch. Yeah. And this was before the Tim Donahue stuff had even happened. Um, but obviously, every year, Summer League was there. Starts in July. Um, the NBA owners they hold meetings every year there in Vegas, either between there or New York. Um, and also, Team USA basketball they hold their training camps in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's been a gradual warm up to see how it's going to be, you know, accepted. And I think maybe you know, like I said, twenty years ago, maybe when it was like more of the the Mob still associated there. I'm not saying it's not, but yeah, probably I can definitely see. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I hope Seattle gets the team back. Um, I know there it was a rumors that LeBron may be you know interested in the Vegas team when he retires, if he retires. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be cool to watch from afar. It definitely is, definitely. And and, and one thing I'm gonna say right now. Well, everybody that goes to Vegas for their reasons, and now you got football teams there, and now the NBA is having three games there in the next three three days. Not three games a day, but, you know, you get it. Right. 
Me, I don't think it would happen, but sold out arenas. That's banking itself. Then you got everybody throwing cash. Yeah. Somebody going to win. We all know that. <laughs> Will it be Vegas? It's usually the house. Will it be the us? <laughs> Will it be us? And that's that's the that's that's the lot of this story, man. And you know, you go down there with two unbelievable talents, Giannis and Braun. You can mix AD and then then you got Tyler Hyburton, you know, with the paces and he's doing his thing right now. You got the 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 Pelicans in the last couple of weeks. They kind of been playing, you know, to that potential that they can play with. Zion's been playing ball. So, you know, you got some marketable. This ain't the BCS. You know, the NBA played it out. You know, and these are the teams that got there. You know, but you got some star power. You know, so let's get it on. <laughs> let's get it on. All right, Mills Lane. <laughs> exactly. So next up, fellas, this is y'all part here. I know y'all about to, y'all about to cook. NBA power rankings. Hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> Top 10, obviously. Right off the that bat, Phoenix Suns, previously number nine, record of 12 and eight. 12 and eight. Um, they can't stay healthy. We knew that was going to happen, though. They can't stay healthy and they have a lack of a bench. Yeah. Two of the main problems we knew they were going to have when they went out and got Bill. Bill and Durant. <laughs> yep. Uh, they've, yet to, they've yet to play together, the, the, the four that they have there or whoever. They've yet to all play together. Pick a roll game against them. The teams are, are killing them. Um, and like, and, yeah, they want to score more than everybody else. But when you don't score more than everybody else, it's a problem. And then when the defense, the defense is not there, it's a terrible thing too. Um, injuries first, but this is the team that they put together. They know all three players' history. Though Kevin Durant's been on the court, he's been hooping, he's been doing his thing. You know, got to get the other guys in. Hopefully, you can get some depth over there. We kind of, like Will said, we already knew what they were going to lack or who they got. So, right now, it's showing. Now, it's either get healthy or you guys are going to have to blend a little bit more to at least be at the end of the race, you know, when, when, when the spring come around. Absolutely. Number nine. The New York Knickerbockers. Previously wow. number 10, 12, and 7. Three takeaways is the, they won the, the the three first quarters last week. They outscored their opponents by a total of 94 to 59. So that they're, they're looking at the uptick. Jalen Bronson went 7 to 12 in three-point range at, on, on his way to lighten up the Pistons for 42. The Knicks, um, hey, respectful ball. Is it fool's you know goal with him? Huh? Is it fool's I, goal with him? You could call it fool's goal, but yeah. in all the standard of the team, for what they have, they don't necessarily have the best player on the floor every night. And I'm talking about team-wise when they're playing another team. Usually you don't have the number one guy. Right. You know, probably number two. But for what they have constructed right now, they're decent. But I wish they would have made some moves, you know, to make it – more realistic, this is a team in the last three years that's kind of been on the hill. Now, do you expect them to just go express? No, but I mean they're going to be competitive. And they're going to they're going to stay there. You know, they're going to keep things tough at times, and there's times where they just don't come to play. Um, Brunson misses shots, random shots. Obviously, that's what it is. These guys miss shots, they lose. They hit shots, they win. Those two guys are their stars right now. RJ Barrett and his and, and, and his dude some doing some things. But on as long as you have the guys like the Celtics, Bucks, and those guys on top, and you know they playing the way they're playing, yeah, yeah, the Knicks are just gonna be in the middle of the pack. They're gonna stay. It's respectful. Too. It's not respectful to New York, I know, but hey, you have to respect if you're in New York because where has this been in the last like twenty years? So, right. Thank you. New York sucks. New York <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming in. That team's not good, man. They're they relying too much on Randall. And Randall, he's... They're relying he's, too much on their stars. Absolutely. I can be right. right. Not, he, but specifically, Randall, who's aging. Like, that dude... Yeah, he, he's no spring chicken. 
Yeah, he's not. He's his game isn't getting better. It's getting worse. Randall loving it. <laughs> number eight, Sacramento Kings. Last week, number eight. They're eleven hmm. and seven currently. Getting back into the helm. Um, Fox is getting back into the helm with the team. He missed some time. Yeah, he scored forty. The last wins against the Clips. Yeah, the numbers. The obviously the, the numbers ain't there. I mean, they, they're not starting off as the same team as last year. But I mean, you still got season to grow, and, and they got they got to maybe run around the team as long as Mike Brown keeps them, you know, on the page. They'll heat up a little bit. Monk been playing out of his mind this year. Team's fun to watch. Yeah, I'm happy, for, I'm happy for I'm happy for Happy for Malik. Still. Number hey, man. You go Halliburton and it's a bonus, man. Hey, who 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 won that trade real quick before we go into this? Real quick. Two seconds. Who won the I mean Sabonis peak. He flashed early. But nah, it, was, it was always gonna be the pace of Halliburton. They yeah, both he, they both they both won. You couldn't play Halliburton and Fox together. Right. So they had to move on. Spacing was all effed up. You're not off ball guys. Who's this on this list right here? The Orlando Magic. Oh, man. are they starting to jail with all this talent they've been accumulating? Mm-hmm. I was saying this last year about them. You were young yeah, legs. Young legs, man. The NBA season two, young legs, you know, and, and it's good for them to go after back. The problem is, can they sustain this, you know? But this year, it seems like they can, hopefully, projectively, you know, as it's trending up. Um, they got guys, the ranked defense. Seven, they, eight straight yeah. wins. Eight straight wins before they um, lost to Brooklyn, and it was a back to back, you know what I'm saying? De- ended up with the bad, um, bad end of the stick there, but hey, they were cruising, you know. I didn't realize yeah. Fultz was still there. Yeah, it actually contributes. And a bunch of guards that just be doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Cole yeah. Anthony. Yeah, Cole Anthony. Yeah, I like that team, man. It's fun to watch. The fact that they're playing that well on defense is impressive. It is. For you, a team that young. But they were, in, they were in a lot of games last year and just didn't win them. We just didn't win all of them. But now they're winning more of those close games. So. They're learning how to finish? Yeah. A lot of finish a bit. Um, definitely you got Panchero, man, and um, and and and, and Wagner They're over there doing their thing, man. And the OG man, shout he, he, you know, hey, he's just there, he's there, but he, 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 he's, he, he's my guy. Shout out to my man Joe Engel, man. I seen him the other night. I said, hey, Joe, what's going on with you? <laughs> um, Benchero going for a forty point night tonight. Um, he's basically the whole Magic team right now, as um, the Cavaliers is just. Grinding, pounding up on them right now. Their game with that. So, shout out to the Magic man for being on this list, man. I mean, let's see how long wow. they can stay with it. I got believe in them. I'm a believe in them. Coming Tickets are eight dollars for Magic game. That's crazy. <laughs> Coming in number six, the Milwaukee Bucks. Last week, number six with a fourteen and six record. Twenty first in defense, fourth in offense. That defensive rating, man, did. My man make that much of a difference on defense. That mm-hmm. and that and you go from one of the best defensive guards to one of the worst. So, man, that's a big swing. It's a big swing. Dame's not a defender at all, right? And yeah, absolutely. Which leads the teams going to attack mode on you more. Now they can go attack mode on you some games, and hey, y'all defensively this is going to be good. But this games where they're going to be able to attack you defensively and. You're gonna be all fucked up. To me, they getting they 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 trying to they trying to crisp a little bit. You know, what I'm saying start the season off slow. You know, you heard ramblings. You know, the star players. You know, he being he arguing with the coach. You know, coach is the main concern as the season started. You know, could AJ and Griffin control this? You know, and that last couple of weeks it's kind of looked like you know it's cool. But you always know what the problem is and the solution is to this. Winning. Make the plays, you know, treat the plays good. But at the end of the day, the coach is still going to be under the rug. You know what I'm saying? And then when they struggle again, that's going to be the guy they go to, the coach. Not these guys. All psych. All psych. Number five, Philadelphia 76ers. 
Last week, number three, 12 and second record, 15th in defense, second in offense. Mm. And Maxi is balling. Yeah. I tried to tell you, we'll get rid of Harden. Maxi was going to go off. They're hooping, man, and, and and their five, the three to five ranking uh, was just off the strength of you know they're playing so good, you know, players got sick. He missed two games, I think. Yeah, B missed away. I think Maxi missed the game last week against Boston. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, they're balling. This ranking right here, everybody, is just off the match of load management. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So how many games has he missed? So it says th- that they are this season they are thirteen and five without Embiid. Hey, wait, what? That don't mm-hmm. sound right, does it? Yeah, it can't. Be. Oh, I'm sorry. Last season, last season. My bad. Last. Oh, okay. Season. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I say, damn, they haven't even played. Some teams haven't even played eighteen games yet. Yeah, I was like, that's crazy. Not to do that time. <laughs> About twenty for some teams. Number four. This is Will's secret team right here. Mm-hmm. The Thunder. Nice. Up from five. 13 and six record. Fifth in defense. Fifth in offense. <laughs> team can go. And what SDA they- is an MVP candidate in this early Try season. Tell people. Kids nasty. <laughs> Kids problem. Yeah. He's clutch too. He got no fear. That dude is a beast. Um, they may take a hit. On a step back, depending on what happens with the Giddy situation, but yeah. uh, other than that, this team is trending up always. Yeah, man. I think, I think honestly, in all, with the parents of the kid not wanting to do anything in terms of the charges, Giddy still might be be playing. I mean, obviously he's still playing. He's playing tonight. Um, yeah, Dunder, man, a bunch of. You got a situation with a bunch of young guys who are very talented. House money you're playing with. You're playing with house money until yep. I feel you make a move. And that's yeah, the craziest house, thing right now. As yeah. much as we rave about this team, if they go through a slump, it's house money. Mm-hmm. So imagine when they really blow up and win a series in the first round and get – oh, my God. Pandora's box haven't even been opened up yet on this team. And that's the scary part. Because what the hell are you going to do? Because you're going to have to do a magic trick. Or you can stand poised and keep these guys forever. But you know in the NBA is not going to happen. I'm excited for this team, man. I'm excited for what can happen. He leads the league in steals at 2.4 a game. Who shot? Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. the best offensive player and he leads the league in steals. Playing both ends of the court. And just like I said, clutch and big in, in the big moments. And he's their go to guy, their closer. He's everything they need. It's, it's And he's doing it all. Which is beneficial for Chet. And he has no pressure. I said, that's what I was telling people. I'm like, yo, Chet, Chet's numbers are technically better than Wemby's because the percentages are way better. But you also got to consider the fact that he's not being asked to be the best player on the team, not even second best player on the team. Right. So he's just chilling. He, he's, he's in a perfect spot. Also, fucking Thunder can draft. Yeah. And develop talent, man. It's crazy. And they got a lot, a lot of that to play with. Pass me that draft. They drafted Gritty, and then they, they drafted Chet and this kid Jalen Williams both in the same year. And Jalen Williams was basically in the running for rookie of the year last year. When and Chet didn't even play. Now it, they just they stacked. Seems nice. Who's the jam up there? Is it Pressy still? No, it's not yeah. Pressy. Is it? I believe so. I don't yeah, believe that's the Hold on. Sam Pressy, I, I believe. Sam Pressy still the GM. Yeah. Okay. Nobody knows what he's doing. I don't think he, he, he I'm pretty he's been he drafted Rusty in them, right? Pressy, yeah. So he's drafted like possibly like four Hall of Famers now. Because hmm. because Shay's well on his way. Yeah. So that would be yeah, Rusty, Harden, KD, 
Well, I guess he did nah, I guess he didn't draft Shy. That's true. He didn't draft Shy. He traded for Shy. But, but 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 gotta get off talent. Yeah, and develop them. They actually develop the guys. Yeah. Very much so. Number three. Previously number four. 14 and 7 record. Denver Nuggets coming in, ranked number 11 in defense, 10th in offense. Not good on the road. <laughs> I mean, the champs, they, they're the champs, but they, I mean, every every team has a flaw, but mm-hmm. their flaw is just not winning on the road. I mean, in the spring, maybe a turn up. Um, right now, um, get your team back, you know, smoothie. You know, Murray missed, missed some time. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're trying to improve your team. I mean, it's off a championship, you know, it may be the most difficult. It may look easy. A bit of a hangover. Say, oh, you may, you know, be on this on on the trend to you know still be that same team and maybe repeat. But it's hard, man. It's hard. Jokic every day, you know, doing what you're doing, and he does a great, good job at it. You know, sustainability. This guy literally can put on thirty in his sleep every game. Thirty and twenty. It's almost, really, that, almost average of a triple double. Triple double, like that, like that in itself is ex- insane. And that would be the only thing I would give the Nuggets as a fail, man. If that happens, man, if that he's not able to do that for them on a nightly basis because he does it, that would be the downfall. But as long as he's doing that, and everybody just keeping pause with him and playing the game he wants to play. <laughs> it'll be all right. But right now it's the early in the season, man. You know, say you can call it punch, drunk, drunk off the punch, you know, or whatever the case is. But I mean, you know, they'll be there. They'll be there at the end, hopefully. They're still oh, the best team in the West. They're still the best team in the league. Yeah, they just they're 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 at that point when the teams identify who they are. They won a, a ship, and they know what it takes to get back to the playoffs. They know they can just pretty much put it on cruise control. Not that yeah, they're gonna make it easy, yeah. but they're gonna know it's gonna be the peaks and the valleys. But they know they yeah. need to peak at the right time. Yeah, they don't need to win the regular season. Right, right, you know? exactly. The way Jokic plays, they don't need to. They just need him to be that man. Play up time. Now this is surprising. Yes, it is <laughs> coming into the season. Number two, the T Wolves. Last week, number two with a fifteen and four record. Ranked number one in defense and 18 in offense. Despite how much we love Anthony Edwards on this show, we collectively did not see that he would just basically overwhelm his team with his energy and make them play better. I didn't see it. I thought he was just going to – I thought they were going to keep dragging him down. I thought Rudy was a pain in the ass. I thought Cat was eventually going to have to be traded. None of that's going like that. They're all – Playing really well together right now. It's unbelievable. Right. And that man, Edwards, is just – he's disgusting, honestly. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, just playing, man. Oh, man. Minnesota. I mean, I wouldn't say 100%. Obviously, nobody would that this team would be this right now. But in reality, you got to – they're playing on some dog shit. They're playing on some dog shit, what they should play with. What Jimmy Butler was trying to instill to Cat years ago. And I'm going to be real with you, Gobert is, is not the he's – the, he's a weird player, but in terms of the defense intensity, he brings it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only thing he brings. Got to continue to have dogs, and they got to play like dogs. They're a team that's going to have to play like dogs to try to get even in the, in, in the seek, in the peak of the West. So – Edwards keeps evolving, and he's like I said, man. Well, you play around him, you play for him, you know, like Jokic situation here. You'll be okay. These guys just got to come out there every night and do that. Pound, glass, attack. Shout out to my man Nas Reed, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they, as crazy as it sounds, man. This may not want to. This may and, and hold on. Speaking of that, Denver said this last year. The hardest matchup that they played in the playoffs was against the T-Wolves. Because if they physically, defensively bring it every game in a playoff series where you got to set the hell up every possession and use a 24, <laughs> they, they scary if they, they want, play they that. They grind way. on you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
think yeah. last year with Cat being in and out of the lineup as much as he was, Gobert not knowing where he fit in at. Nice. Chemistry was all jacked up. Also, last year they probably were still kind of trying to figure out who Tina was, and it's clear. It's yeah. not Cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that man that man Ant give me Kobe vibes, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Just his competitiveness. He's just a killer. His will to win. He's got a killer instinct. Mm-hmm. And he might be just as good football player as he is a basketball player. <laughs> he said he liked football more. He ain't even like basketball. Same thing Iverson used to say. <sighs> he said he's gonna be. He said he's gonna be the first um, NBA player. They think he's gonna be the first NBA player potentially to go jump to the NFL. What I mean, you. I mean, we wouldn't love it. You know what I'm saying? But it'd be dope I for him. Would. to do Hey, my Minnesota ain't my team. Please go play. I'm not even talking about for Minnesota's sake. No, no, not for Minnesota's sake. Just for the sake of the league, man. Just for the sake of the league. He got a gun. Yo, they are some pussies for that, dog. Ant Simmons back on the court tonight, and I can't even start on my fantasy because I got my lineup on (laughs) Smash. And number one, no surprise, Wheels, Boston Celtics. Last week, number one, 15 and four record, league best, number two in defense, number nine in offense. Got and they are undefeated at right home. <laughs> first, first round of the tournament, booted. They are one of two teams that are ranked in the top 10 at both ends of the floor. Yeah, so this is, we just got to stay healthy. Again, this is another team that I don't give a shit about the regular season. It's going to matter what happens in the playoffs. I'm just wishing, I'm dreaming. Of it. Um, shout out to the Boston Celtics, man. Hey, we're not gonna even talk about the playing because that to the end of the day is is about May and June, and I hope that the Celtics preach that to their team, and I think they did. Um, yeah, you just wait, man. You know, they're gonna teams got to grind out against this team, and and from recent history in the Eastern Conference. Teams haven't been able to do that. And hey, the, the Pacers shot miraculously well the other day. When you shoot well like that, you deserve to win games. Well, the Pacers have been shooting like that all year. They're, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, they're, they're, yeah, yeah. Re- Record-breaking offense. They're, they're going – Halley's probably the MVP right now. Broke down – I was telling Coach the other day, that game was 241 at the beginning of the game, the over-under. And it jumped down miraculously, and it's crazy because I was talking to someone – you know, and he wanted to put a bet in for, for the over. And I sat here and I told him, I said, dude, you really want to put the over? I said, that no. shit probably going to go under. And then second quarter started, the under went from 240, over under went from 241 and a half to like 227. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I said, to, true yourself, man. I said, man, just collect my funds, man. Hallie leading the league in assists. He's averaging like yeah, Holly B. So. 27 a game. The kids is just killing. Yeah, man. Kids crazy. Indiana, you know. We remember those days, you know, Reggie Miller, you know, doing some things. But, hey, this man, I won't say he's, he, he's ahead of the game of Reggie Miller, but projectory-wise, he could be, you know. But right now, you know, still Reggie's town, you know. But, hey, this young kid right here looking to get the keys. Rick Smith's about to give him the keys. <laughs> 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 Real talk, man. Shout out to the young man. Shout out to hold on. Shout out to my man Nate Smith getting run. I'm happy he's getting run, man. Shout out to him getting get some burn, you know what I'm saying? Being a rotation player and all that. I think Bruce Brown should have stayed in Denver. Nah, he's balling for him right now, though. I mean, I just and think Nate, honestly, he's a part of them. He's but a, it's good for him. It's he good for him. He had to get, the, he had to get paid. He earned, he earned getting paid. That's why he. That's no, why no, he earned getting that dollar. I wish Denver would have gave him that dog. I'm just saying, I'm not even talking. Hey, to, they to, couldn't. Get your money, man. But I wish you would have stayed in Denver, man. <laughs> the mile high, you know. Next up, switching gears. That was the NBA talk. A little bit of NHL. We're probably going to like this one as well. Let's go. Top 10 power rankings. Number 10, the Detroit Red Wings, previously number 11. Hmm. The next seven days, they got Toronto. Hmm. And the Devils. Just, that's Detroit, right? They just picked up Patrick Kane, so he's. I think he's debuting tonight. Really? Yeah. Okay. Two. 
You're a Jersey fan, right? Jersey, 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 Jersey. You know what it is, man. Jersey Devils. Number nine. Jake's team, I guess. The Maple Leafs, I think. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I think it's he's he's um, the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets, yeah, okay. He's a weirdo. <laughs> ain't going against the grain. Previously, number 12 this week, number nine. They played Detroit and Minnesota in the next seven days. Hmm. Let's see. Number eight, the Colorado Avalanche. They dropped down from the number five spot. They placed the start. So they got three games in the next seven days the Stars, Nashville, and Vancouver. Avalanche, man, I think they did. Yeah. Yeah, they had, they had a couple of shitty ass games though the, the last week, man. Just me just watching off late night shit like scores, and I'm just like, I would not, not place money on late night NHL. <laughs> not do that. I mean, if it was before seven o'clock, I'll do it. But yeah, it's not like a bad yeah. recipe. Late night NHL? <laughs> Men's. No, no Unless Vegas is playing. Unless Men's. Vegas is playing. Men's Vegas may be an exception, but I haven't done it. But Vegas Men's. may be the exception. <laughs> Man's betting on high school track. <laughs> no, no, I wish. Hold on, I wish I could bet on high school track. What's it? Uh, too late. Got a nah. line. I'm in there. <laughs> you need that line. Day, you gotta start working for your thirty day chip again. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop January first to the thirtieth, and then Black uh, History Month is back in the game, baby. <laughs> That's how you gonna bring it in, huh? <laughs> bring in um, a new year, bro. <laughs> coming in number seven, up from number thirteen last week. Um, yeah, Florida Panthers. This week they got Anaheim, Edmonton, and the uh, Bruins. Pinning that work, man. Pinning that work. Um, the third, the third in the um Atlantic. I mean, it, it up um the trail in Detroit and Boston though. But the Boston game is definitely pivotal this week just to stay in the um. And, and the point differential and all that stuff, man. Currently with thirty, you know the Bruins on top of the division with thirty-seven right now. But um, yeah, that Bruins game is gonna be circle for them, man. Yeah, sure. The momentum. Number six stayed flat. Uh the L.A. Kings. Who? Yeah, that that team right there, man. It's um, I can see I can see them in um. I can see them in the nights, man, bowing out for all um, West supremacy. Now that's early, early talk, but yeah, super, <laughs> super, super early. But um, I, I, I like, I like them. I mean, you can have your, you can have your Lightnings and your Panthers and your Bruins and all that. The Kings are like, you know, it's cool picks, pick that nobody's really going with. I'll go with the grain on this one. <laughs> Number five, last week, number seven, my Dallas Stars. They just been kind of coasted. Hey. Hey, you can kind of do that sometimes, man. Um, depending on what type of team and, and they're a good team. So right now, as the season goes for them, um, this remain course. I think their thing is staying healthy as well. Like you gotta stay healthy, man. And they get a little action from Wyatt Johnston, which is surprising too, because they I don't think they depend on him to contribute as much as he has. Loaded, maybe. Are they loaded? Are they loaded loaded cast? I don't know much of the stars roster. Um, but they brought most of the people back from last year. Um I I think it's just the whole chemistry thing. Y'all still got Tyler Sagan, right? He was for Bruin, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people used to have his jersey in town, man. He's a boss. He's a beast. <laughs> number four, the, the Vancouver Canucks. Last week, number four as well. Vancouver Canucks. I usually, I usually just see this team as a team that's like, ugh. But if they're doing what it do this year, man, up in Vancouver, man. I know you want an NBA team, man, but hey, get hot, <laughs> get hot, and they'll, and they'll, and they'll get off the NBA for a little bit. Now I know, yeah, yeah. First off, 
you're in a tough division there, man. You got the you got the Vegas and the Kings in the same division as them, man. So it's dug it out just off those guys. For me, I'll say this, and I'm not the smartest hockey man. I think the way those two teams play is gonna make this team play a little harder. I'm just gonna just be a, a, a predicting magician, whatever you want to call it. Jake, I wish you was here, man, so you could kind of chime in on this. You, your hockey that man. That part. That so, part. So, so it's just more of for them. It's just growing and playing in these teams and then being competitive. Because if you're not competitive against these teams that's up above you, then What's your season really, you know, is. But right now, for the town that be excited for their team, yeah, absolutely. I'm all for a team being excited about their guys, man, until you ain't no more. Don't go over crazy with it, you know, but, hey, celebrate a little bit. Said the Cowboys, man. Don't go Cincinnati Red on me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to my man Tyler Speed, though. I mean, he was a member of the group. Um, it was a Cincinnati Reds fan that, that, that got crazy with me because I had said some things. But um, since then, I don't think we apologize to each other. But in the world of um, social media where you know you, you don't want to see me anyway, you know, we we apologize, you know, without wording. And we comment, we chat on each other's comments and post daily, you know, so shout out to that man. Number three, the New York Rangers stay flat at number three. Hmm. Mark Messier ain't walking through that door, but right now. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> so long ago. I mean, kids are done playing. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> number two, the Golden Knights of Vegas, previously number one. Rake up that money so an NBA team come to ASAP. Nah. <laughs> so, nah, man, this is this is must see hockey, man. Whatever they play, they better spend I, that. They better spend that sphere money. <laughs> Get that team. This is sphere money. <laughs> I've never done this in my life, but I flipped the NBA game to a Vegas night game. That's wild. Really? I did, I did that this season. And I said, yo, and then he must have some money on the on that. Nah, yeah. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> It was, a Lakers, it was a Lakers game. Nope. nope. It was a Lakers game. Nope. I'm here as hell. I turned. I turned it. I said, "What else is playing?" And it's in Vegas. I, I turned. Put the Vegas game on. And I hate to sit through hockey, but I sat through it. He's like, anything got to be better than watching these bum ass Lakers. I might have. I might have seen the score twice. You know. You know. Just just looking on my phone and yeah, nah, nah. nah. And this why I say Austin Reeves. What are the Rangers doing? And this is what I uh, said that uh, we would enjoy this segment as well. Because it's going through it right now. His Patriots are rebuilding. They're terrible. His, his Celtics are number one in so NBA, good. and his Bruins are number one in the NHL. Yeah. Uh, they always do this. I don't. It's the you one team. <laughs> no. no. Yo, they, they broke the points record last year and then got bounced the first round. Like, they like... <laughs> Team goofy, man. Man, hey, right now, Bruins fans are happy going on the green line to the games. They're excited. They're the typical fashion. Celtics, too, going to the games. They're happy as hell. I can't wait till May. <laughs> I can't wait till May. May's one of my favorite months of the year. We're, we're, becoming, we're becoming the Maple Leafs, which is ridiculous. Yikes. No Very yikes. Maybe it was actually, actually playing this year. I mean, like I said, they're no, regular they, season. No, team. they play yeah. every year and then they choke. And that's what we and then they doing. choke. In the words of Sean Silver, um, the Cowboys of um the NHL is the Maple Leafs. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Man, gotta leave about right. right. Same colors too. Billy Melrose. Nah, he ain't here. Oh, uh, it's Melrose. Coach Will and two yeah. with the NHL rankings. You heard? Ain't that that guy's I, name that wears like the nice shirt suits and stuff? Yeah, Barry, Barry Melrose. Barry Melrose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a, Barry, like a, he's a dog. He looks like a mod, uh, uh, a made guy. Yeah, he's made for sure, yeah. My man's with the mafia. I don't care what nobody yeah, says. That's, that's what made means. Yeah, oh. he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> he sit there with a stern face like, this team going to win tonight. Nah, I'm letting y'all know. <laughs> I got a guy. <laughs> Making threats over the air like, this team better win today. Like, <laughs> This team is the better team in the style. Um, 
Shout out to the NHL, man. Hey, like we said, man, be giving y'all what y'all want, man. A little bit of everything, sprinkling it up. Shout out to you. We're going to take a quick man. break. We'll be back by 1520. We're going to finish strong, brothers. Be right back. Don't go nowhere. What's up, guys? It's Mike Larimore here. I uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out to STWF Media for all of the love and the uh, the positivity they've been sending my way recently. We partnered up. You know what I'm saying? I just like the energy the guys bring over there. So any sports talk, you want to talk football, you want to talk baseball, yeah, they might even talk bowling if you're interested. Boxing, whatever your thing is, man, uh, go check them out. There's a lot of great coverage over there. Again, it's nothing but positive energy from these guys. Go check them out. Peace. Welcome back to the Parlay Perspective. We just went through a little bit of NBA, NHL talk in the first segment tonight. You know, this tonight we talk about a little bit of everything sports related for us as far as the major sports. Uh, real quick before we get into the next segment, a couple of hot points for you guys. Uh, Bang went off tonight for 49 against the Pistons, who have lost 18 in a row. Who did? Bang. Pist- oh, Bang. Bang. Desmond Bang going crazy against the Pistons. Pistons have not won a game since October. <laughs> You really adopted the dog. I was born here. <laughs> and Kaylin oh Clark my. makes history tonight. She becomes the first player in D1 history with 3,000 points, 750 boards, and 750 dimes. She's a savage. Great old beast. Great, great, great. Keep your name in the accolades forever. She and probably got to end up with 3,500 points total. She'll be I'm gonna be plus and a thousand plus and everything and, and, and rebounds and assists. I'm gonna say this on wax. She's gonna be the best basketball woman's basketball player in, the, in 10 ass, years. Man. In 10 yeah. years, in 10 years, they're gonna say she's the best college basketball player to ever play in the game ever. She yeah, she's also she got a win though. Better than Lobo and Miller? Yep. No one better than Miller, no, but <laughs> no, 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 nobody's better than Miller. Nobody, but they're gonna be saying it just because of the modern history and people that are not going into the history books to really. But go, hey, we can't be mad at them go, because yeah. history yeah. Here's they the thing, know, though. Reggie is Cheryl's little brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, cool. she, she has to win though because no matter how much what stat she puts up, Tarazi got what two rings in college. So did Maya Moore. Like you got to win. Stewie got like two. She ain't got none. You gotta win. You gotta win. That part. You should have gotten a transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the Iowa team stack. <laughs> it's just that it's just that LSU stack more. So. Right. And they got the horse back. <laughs> it's game time. So, real quick, going into a next sec. So, another update. And B went off for 50 tonight against the Wizards. God damn. Wizards are truly awful. Yeah, and they talk about um, Kuzma may be available. They need to trade everyone. The team's horrible. If I'm Kuzma, I don't even want to be there. If I'm Kuzma, he's probably selling on purpose. For real. So, next up, we got winter meetings. A little baseball talk. Look, <laughs> so right off the top, man, the Juan Soto trade between the Yanks and the Padres is being Annoying. finalized. Annoying as shit. You don't like that, Will? Yankees always do this. Whatever. Yankees yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I kind of jaw drop, but usually when you jaw drop for you, the Yankees is like, oh shit. I'm sitting here like they still suck. No, no, and that's more what I'm saying. Like I'm sitting here like, let's see, we, we gonna do this for a, a three month, four month run when we know that they will be longer than that. All right. <laughs> but um, in all, I mean, the Yankees, you know, just got two two extra bats yesterday. So I mean, well, amazing. So. Mainly they got lefties, which is important. They needed lefties. So they got two lefties in Soto and Verdugo. But, eh, teams out there. 
And they gave us three birds, literally. I don't know if they gave us for Soto yet. I'm talking about terms of Yeah, we don't know about the arms that they're going to give up for Soto, but it's definitely – I think they got one main prospect that they always want to protect, and he might be going. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. So the reported rumor is, um, as it's been finalized that we said, is they are sending Soto and Grisham to New York. Wow, Grisham for, too. For Michael King, Drew Thorpe, Brito, Vasquez, and – Kioski? Cal? Yeah. Huh. This doing this finding people under the rug, huh? Something like that. Take this year, okay. I think this I said. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're set prospects. Yeah. Kind of helps the Padres out too, kind of smoothing their team. I don't so think you need all those th- those dogs anyway down there, but hey. it could be a rental too, because he's only got a year left. I mean he got the, this is the last year of contract, so so you we'll got to build of Soto, Judge, and Verdugo. I mean, they'll have the money to do it. Just that, will they want to stay and will it be worth it? Right. They spend, but I don't think they spend like they did when Papa Steinbrenner was still there. Yeah, it's not like those days. Not the Jeter days where they were spending. Papa Steinbrenner was finding Daryl Starberry in the projects. Get off that stoop. Yeah. No, and that shit. Yeah, fucking crack <laughs> Put it down. Million dollars. <laughs> and oh, the next, and then the last thing as far as the winter meetings, um, the rumors about the potential extension for Bryce Harper. So he has eight years and 196 million remaining on his 13 330 million dollar deal he got back in 2019. Why is he getting an, why are they doing an extension for him? Uh, I'm guessing, and this is to help. Uh, re, like, I'm guessing it's a restructure to put put more money on the back end so that you can build a better team now. Okay. To maintain where they're going, because they got some guys they got to sign now. They said if they do it, um, it'll probably be something to range of extending out another two to three years, and sixty to eighty million dollars a year. <laughs> God. Shit. Listen here. Hey. You get, you get to the promised land they give you. <laughs> they ask you deserve it, yo. That's crazy, man. And, and look, and you got to ask yourself, what is what do you want out of a player when you spend three hundred thirty million dollars for thirteen years? What do you what are you looking for? And number one thing is the championship, and they got one. So, shit, I got only a thirteen year commitment, and I only got to give you one chip, which I think is the only chip they're gonna get. Shit. Well, they, y'all well done, I guess. That, team, that, that team's still young, though. Like, they have some some young talent still, so they could end up right back there again. So, Let's see what happens. I just realized who um, uh, Soto's agent was. Who that? Boris? Yep, Anna Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That Nazi. <laughs> That dude's intense. And I believe I saw a report today where they said um, Shohei. Mm-hmm. Met he with don't the want talking. He met with the Dodgers. He already met with Toronto. He, don't, he basically told, he tried to put a gag order. He basically said that if anybody talks about their meetings, he won't be going. run. Yeah. yeah. Man, fuck all that shit, man. This is America, man. Shit. We want to know we're on the clock shit with you, especially with your ass. When you about to get seven hundred million dollars, projectedly, shit. We want to know. And hold on, speaking of Otani, these Japanese motherfuckers are getting that cream. Who this Yoma Babokuto motherfucker that's almost worth like three hundred? Who's he? He's nice. Shit. I, I know. Shit. Three hundred million dollars right off the gate. Shit. Look at out here. Mm-hmm. They about to spend a billion dollars on two motherfucking players. They, mm-hmm. you know, that shit and, is sitting and there. still not winning. Mm. Damn shame. So, but they'll sell a shit ton of jerseys, though. Yeah. Oh my god. Absolutely. So, what do y'all know about the um, MLB's Rule Five Draft? I don't know the rules of it. I just know. Yeah. So, it, so they pretty much take turns selecting minor league players. 
mm-hmm. who meet a certain eligibility criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, they must have been employed on a big league roster for a duration of the upcoming season. Otherwise, they offer back to the original teams. Mm-hmm. So there was actually a um, there was actually a Rule Five draft held today. There was ten picks in the draft. Uh, the A's uh, snatched from the Yankees right hand pitcher Mitch Spence. The Royals uh, from the Yankees as well right hand pitcher Matt Sawyer. Sawyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rockies from the Rays took right hand pitcher Anthony Molina. The White Sox from the Red Sox took left-handed pitcher Shane Drohan. The Nationals from the Marlins took uh, shortstop Nassim Nunez. The Cardinals from the Red Sox, right-hand pitcher Ryan Fernandez. The Mets from the Rangers, right-hand pitcher Justin Slayton. The Guardians, which well, sounds weird saying that. The Guardians um, from the Diamondbacks, third baseman, D- Davison De Los Santos. Basin? Um, the Padres from the Mariners, right hand pitcher Stephen Kolick. And the Rangers from the Yankees, right hand pitcher Carson Coleman. Hmm. Oh, so, so they, they just have an auction. They have an auction for players, basically. Yep. Oh, that's shit dope. That's a dope aspect, though. No bullshit. I never really looked at it before until this year. So I thought, you know, that's pretty cool that they kind of do that, especially if you get a guy, he might get drafted by a team, get stuck behind somebody and not get much much time, and then some other team come. It's almost like that's their version of the um, practice squad, almost. Yeah. They come and save somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you saved me. <laughs> now, now, that was a rule five. Now, the actual MLB draft, as again, the winter meetings is going on. They got the uh, draft order and a lot of results. Number one, with a 2% odds to get the number one pick, the Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> um, the Reds with a 0.9% chance. Number two pick, and then to close out the top six, you got the Rockies, the A's, the White Sox, and the Royals. So I thought it's pretty cool. Two Ohio teams in the top two, you lord. (laughs) Yeah, Jake was losing in Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, I get it in Ohio. (laughs) (laughs) Now we're gonna speed it up here. We're gonna finish strong, fellas. Let's go. Do about face. The NFL talk now. I NFL talk? Talking, I think we talked about it a little bit on Monday. Uh huh. <laughs> the Zach Wilson not wanting to go back out there and Robert Sala having to come out and do some damage control. That nonsense. Um, Aaron Rodgers coming out, do a little damage control. But Zach Wilson will be starting this Sunday against the Texans. Yeah, if you're you know in Zach I- Wilson's shoes, how do you approach this? Play the game. You're a professional. Play the goddamn game. Shut up. Yep, fuck up. Because it's what happened. I mean, I, I agree with what he did, but you you know what happened between when he did that and the last day and a half. You know what happened. Everybody had his fucking neck. Like Will said, it would happen. And now you got to deal with reality. Like, you got to go out there. You got to play the game. You know, interesting conspiracy moment. He's going to rig that game on Sunday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to see it. No, he, he got to protect any any start that he gets from here on out because he's done here. So these are all job interviews. So every time he goes out there, he's trying to put better film out there so he can try to get another job. Because right now it's looking like he's warming up for the XFL. It's not going good. He's why? Think so? It's over. It's over. Rip the games. Fuck it. Never work again. Shit. Listen here. He gonna be. I mean, hey, he'll be the backup. He'll be a backup somewhere or a third string. That probably won't get back to the starting spot. That's kind of what his career has been, and I feel like honestly, I think Zach Wilson would be happy with his career being like that. No bullshit. 
That's crazy as hell because I, I feel no professional should ever feel that way. And you go out there and do your job, absolutely. But, yeah, I think he's happy with this being this there. Him being the second – was the second pick in the draft when he got drafted? Mm-hmm. Yep. Shit out here. Oh, my God, mama. I went from nothing to this? Listen, that was the day that he got doomed when all that shit happened. <laughs> Listen, hey, man. Next up, we got – Well, this might be some interest to you. I ain't trying to be funny, man. Of course not. <laughs> NFL draft board updates. Ooh, fascinating. See? <laughs> so, we're just going to look at the, the – we'll, we'll, you want to do top ten or top five? Ten. Just soft number. Oh, yeah, we definitely got to do ten. I just saw who somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> So right now, number 10, no surprise, you got the Raiders. The Raiders. Raiders. The Raiders. They're five and seven. They said the biggest needs are quarterback, cornerback, tackle, uh, interior lineman, and running back. Oh, they ain't going after a quarterback. <laughs> For sure. They ain't going after a quarterback. Is this, is this I don't think they I mean at number 10? They're going after a quarterback. I don't think so. No, no, no. I, and I only say this because a lot of teams, when they need that QB, they go going to get it. And I'm going to – unless the Raiders – and we know they've – hey, get this person, and they're like, we're going to go get the um the car tow guy down the street. We know that. But this is a pick right here. You got to be safe. You got to go cure the quarterback. No, that's the, but that's the opposite of safe. You go safe. No, in my eyes, you go safe. You gotta go QB. You no, gotta go with the truth. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. QB what? is the least safe pick they could make. It's the least safe. QBs Why? do not because QBs do not translate. How many QBs are good every year that end up being good? Like one, two? There's no that's there's good. no at, at pick yeah. 10. That's not so safe. No, no. So what we're saying is there's no prospects in this draft. Which what, what we're saying there's is there's that prospects, it, but most of your quarterbacks about, are gonna be in the top. safe. Yeah, if you talk about yeah. safe. At ten, it's probably gonna be a lineman or a corner yep. or something like that. So there's no, no. So again, I'm gonna say this. So the, who, who, the rated QBs in this draft, the way the NFL is gonna rate them, you gotta remember too, though, it's a business too. As much as you say lineman and much you say all that, That's who the fuck is no, no. Yeah. Listen, who the fuck is the Raiders QB right now? They going after a QB, and no, the QB may not be the savior of their franchise, but they going mean. after one. They put the mean. tip pick. I'm gonna book it right now. They're right. going with a quarterback unless they go get one through a trade. Bro, they're going after QB. Listen, and it you, sucks to say they may not translate, but he's gonna be a Raider. Nobody's gonna be a Raider. QB is. <laughs> Y'all crazy? Hey, hey, like that. hey, you predicting it, saying it louder, and speaking over me doesn't make it right. I'm just saying the fact is, is that look, they got they got a lot of money already invested in Jimmy G. They also got Devontae Adams there, who's not gonna want to play with a rookie. I don't think they can draft a quarterback right here at ten at, at the no. ten spot. Who, who's no. gonna be? Now, it's interesting that you mentioned. You're trade Adam. Devontae more than likely. They might have to use him as trade bait to move up. Yeah, that's the – now, if they do that, that's a little different. But even then, they, it's still – that. then you're looking at – they're not even going to start the, whoever they draft because they're going to they gonna play Jimmy until he – they paid him too much. They're going to play Jimmy. Yeah, we don't even know who the coach is going to be there yet. Shit. And that's the other thing. We don't even know who the coach let's is. See, let's see if Jimmy can pass a physical at the end of the year. <laughs> Never, right? <laughs> That that is more what I'm saying. I just feel like you have to. You have the Raiders. You have to fuck Jimmy. But listen, we all lost money in life. The other thing too, the other thing too, because how many times do we talk about that? You don't just draft the quarterback just because you got to draft the right guy, right? Because if you draft the wrong guy, it pushes you back a lot, right? I understand. I understand all that, but I'm just only speaking from the market assess and what the Raiders need. They need a QB. Am I? I don't care how much you're paying Jimmy they G. I don't care how much you're paying Aiden. You need a QB. And I may not, like I said, it may not be QB. a QB of the future, but it's going to be a QB in the next four years of the Raiders. Oh, no. <laughs> that, so, 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 so that right there is the craziest part of your statement. If you're not drafting the QB of the future, you're not drafting a QB, period. I'm only speaking of what y'all saying because y'all basically saying there's no QBs on the market. There's no, no guys that, that the Raiders are like, oh, no this guy right here. But I just feel no. like from the drafting, they're going to draft a QB. No, no one said there's nobody on the market. We're just saying that it doesn't really make sense for them to draft a QB at number 10. If they're up at, like, number 5. And number 10 is going to be a reach. Hold on one second, 10? y'all. We got somebody to bring somebody up in here. Ooh. 
He's alive. Let's get him up in here. The fourth wheel. Jiggity, jiggity, jig. Yes, sir. Back in action. It's been a while, but I woke up a little late. Show's over. Here it is. <laughs> hey, speaking on this topic, though, you guys were talking about maybe the Raiders trying to trade up. Who's a normal trade partner for the Raiders than it has been for the last couple of years? The Patriots. The Patriots don't even know what they want to draft. Swap picks or get Devontae Adams because you know they want a weapon anyway. Patriots don't really need necessarily. They they could if they wanted to, but they don't necessarily need to draft a quarterback this year because there are like two good prospects if they wanted to go that, but they don't have a line. I think they should focus on line, and if they can trade that pick to get the weapon to where they wouldn't have to draft Marvin, cool because you got the tackle out of Penn State who's a good pickup, Joe Alt from Notre Dame who's a good pickup, so per- Patriots would be the perfect draft partner for the Raiders if they don't know what they want. And that would get them to two to either get Why do we even Boys or Drake May. Huh? That's horrible. I hate all of that. That's why that's like Devontae Adams now is trending in age, depending on – we know he has talent. And I think they will – in the situation, like a wide receiver, they, they can go on, but a wide receiver like a Harrison, I would go after him. They're looking for a receiver to give them spark. Though the Patriots have won championships, they won with low-level wide receivers that ended up being great in Tom Brady's system. They're looking for somebody that's like every week like, ah, shit, we can depend on this guy. I feel. So just put it into perspective, I'm Thank looking you. at uh, you too. CBS Sports. Their top 10 prospects in the upcoming draft. They only have two quarterbacks in the top 10. Who is Caleb and I'm guessing you. May. Penix? Who? Drake. Oh, May. North yeah, Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you go and you look at the quarterbacks and narrow it down, they got Williams, May, then Daniels, McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Now, these next two, they're not coming out. That's Sanders and Ewers. They Where's have Penix? them and they got Bo Nix, then Penix. They're, I mean, I guess one of those guys could be there at 10, but that's a reach. If, if I'm the GM at number 10, I know I need a quarterback, but I will probably take a lineman either on the defense. They have the same yeah, they, yeah, they have the same problem with bad O line as well. So and they already ha- they also have Jacobs, Adams, so they have weapons and pieces there. I don't know. You know what's crazy about this right now? What's that? Mm. Overall, because we're talking about this today, and this is the excitement that the draft brings, mm-hmm. that these motherfucking picks may not even be the same next week. No, so we're talking about the Raiders right yeah. here at 10. And they may not even be at 10. I think, honestly, the Raiders are a better team to get out of 10. But if they don't, it's pretty interesting right here. You know what I'm saying? But then the next, whoever is the team that is going to be at 10 eventually, the draft mm-hmm. is the Whole point of the mark, man. Shay, shout oh, out, man. man. That's why I'm hot. That's why I'm hot like that. And I thought about my like, hold on, I'm thinking about this shit. I'm like, hold on. It's fucking week 13, 14. <laughs> this motherfucker might not be in position, in that position, to go in and go get somebody, depending yeah. on who. No, we all know that. I know. We just heard the ability to rush in the fucking draft and all. I Chase guess it's got something cooking. Cook. What is it? James was for. James loved it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got something cooking, coach. What is it? It's number nine team that's in a nine position right now. I know mm. it's going to piss some people off, but I love it, dog. Number nine, <laughs> the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> they suck. They need everything. <laughs> oh, everything man. at running back. They're five and seven. The biggest needs are tackle, <clears throat> guard, edge rusher, linebacker, and cornerback. They can't even take a quarterback, and they stuck with that monstrosity of a of a contract. Yeah, these contracts making stuff difficult. Damn. Oh, no, when the Saints go much. <laughs> hey, like I said last week, it's some Saints people that I befriended over the last couple of years. Much love to y'all, but as a whole, y'all catch this smoke, man. Y'all up notches. Y'all right there with Eagles fans. <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to jump nothing, but shout out to fucking Luca. Good Lord. First half, yeah. triple, double. First half, Jesus. 
first half. <laughs> 29. Hold on, hold on. You going to add it. You going to have to add the headband after, before that. Headband, Luca. And that's why the triple double. Luca. We got a headband on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to wear that every night now. With a yeah, cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's wild. Uh, no, I saw that and I, it, it shot me for a second. It's the only reason I said it. I didn't mean to jump it. My bad. It's all good. All good. Eight, it's the parlay tonight. I mean, the uh, parlay perspective tonight. Uh, number eight, we just talked about them earlier. The New York Jets at four and eight. They need a tackle, interior offensive line, quarterback, safety, wide receiver. Yeah, I think their uh, biggest needs definitely going to be that line. They need to move off of Beckton. The guy's too injury prone. Then they move off of who? Makai Beckton. How many years left on the contract? They're going to ride that out until the end of the contract, at least. Did they re sign him or is he still on his rookie deal? I don't know. I feel like you know more about him when you start talking about him. <laughs> no, I really, no, I really don't. I just know that they were all high on him because he was a six eight dude from Louisville that was supposed to be a monster. But all because he's tall doesn't mean he's good. But well, he's he is. Injured. He is pretty good. He just gets hurt. Beckton, he is in the last year of his contract mm. right now. They might, um, they they like, they might resign him. I don't know. See, yeah, because they let they voided somehow they voided out the twenty twenty four one. Oh, so they're going to move on, I'm guessing, then. Okay, fifth-year player option. He's going to pick that okay. up. <laughs> yeah, he'll pick it up, so he'll be there. <laughs> Number seven, Tennessee Titans at four and eight. Needing to tackle, cornerback, wide receiver, edge, and running back. That'd be a perfect spot for Denzel Burke to go from Ohio State. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why you feel that way? Tell him why, Jay. Because they need major help on defense because they just gave up Bayard the safety, and if they picked up a corner to start that defensive secondary young, I think it'd be good. Bayard, he kind of cooked out there. He got his moments, don't get me wrong, but I kind of see why they let him go. But it's still giving up secondary spots, and if they want to start out young, kind of just like how Cleveland did when they had – uh, Denzel Ward young and then went out and got Greg Newsom, who turned out to be a freaking monster when Greedy Williams fell apart due to injury. Greedy Williams. Starting, young at, starting young at your corner spots are great. I mean, just look at how Stingley's doing in Houston. And then you got, um, I, I was a little, oh, and Sauce Gardner with the Jets. If you get that young secondary, your team's going to be in good shape. Get a young secondary, then you can afford to invest into your line. Yes. Um, one thing I did like about that I saw this week in Tennessee is I saw Will Levis getting into Hopkins' ass on the sideline. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I like that. When I saw that, a lot. You no, know, some people may say, "Oh, he can call him out." I saw some somebody trying to be a leader on that team because they needed him to call. Who is the leader? Somebody, because I smell bitch in here. <laughs> I smell. I smell pussy. <laughs> Like number, number six, the New York football giants coming in at four and eight. Fuck Biggest shit. needs, running back, defensive tackle, quarterback, O-line, and wide receiver. Wide Why receiver you just say everything? <laughs> I mean, most of these teams in the uh, that you can name a bunch of positions, they need help at. So. Did you say that with a burp, too? Damn. I did not. <laughs> that sounded sad like it for a second. Yeah, no, the giants need a little bit of help on everything. They even need a punter. Come on now. Number five, the, the Chicago Bears at four and eight, who also have the number one pick. <laughs> the uh, Commanders at number four at four and nine record. They need edge, quarterback, offensive tackle, linebacker, and wide receiver. You forgot one more thing they need. You need a coach. Hey, coach. <laughs> <laughs> we got need a coach. To, yo, oh man, listen. <laughs> Dukes, Ron Rivera hate never subsides. I love it. Yes. It's not a hate, honestly. It's just the end of time. <laughs> I, I'm not hating. I'm not hating on the guy. First off, the guy did, it, did some things, did some good things. But everything comes to an end. You should I mean, but they got his replacement already, so it's really not that big of a deal. Isn't that where – I don't even think they got the replacement. I don't even think they got the replacement, honestly. Keep it real with you. They're not going to flip the name Eric. No, I don't think Eric so. Eric enemy is not going to take that spot over. They're no. not going to bring in a first year, uh, uh, no. first time coach there. 
I don't see them. I don't see them doing that. They're trying to go. They're trying to. They're trying to get some some seats in that stadium. They're gonna go after somebody that at least coached uh, a college football game before. They ain't going after him. I know this make the bill. I, I I wish I wish that was his opportunity. A life. Who we talking about? Being a me. No, I do think Washington, or, okay, yeah. Washington, yeah. But I do think he does get opportunity. They said it's going to be upwards of 12 positions open. open. Oof. Now, well, number three, which is weird, but he just got back. Arizona Cardinals at three and ten. Then the cornerback, wide receiver, defensive tackle, inside, interior offensive line, and edge. This is where I think I see um, Marvin Harrison go. To where? Arizona. What pick is that? That's three? That's three. You think he's going to make it to three? Wow. I think so. I think somebody's going to panic and move, try to move up to number two. Or Chicago may want to move down and have two first still and get some more in the future. <laughs> if they decide to stick with Fields. But it's just me. It's, it's, it's what I was doing just now. What's that? A little mock draft. Oh, hey, yeah. Will, I love your pick. <laughs> Who's your pick? Well, oh, you know, I picked that. No, yeah. I picked Marvin. I picked okay. number two. So Who went number one? Caleb. Y'all can't see him? I can no, see it. I, can. I can see a bit. It's on my side. What screens? I got it. Okay. I see it now. Yes. Where they got or did I can't see the bottom picks? Will did Joe Alt go in the top ten? Yeah, Alt went eight to Notre, uh, uh, Notre Dame, eight, eight to the Bucks. Hey, nice. two, two. Look at you, look at your Raiders. Oh, hey, eleven. <laughs> <laughs> what they got? What? Oh, they got Jake May at eleven. I just feel um, like the NFL is going to make these motherfuckers take a QB. <laughs> Hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. Does this That's Arizona funny, give up? Arizona gives up on Kyler and goes with JJ McCarthy. That's wild. I don't see that. They've done it before. That's that was not that big ass game. contract. I know that's the part. But maybe not. Nah, maybe you still draft them and then you just yeah, you know I mean you just play it out. Man, I like that. I like that Jets pick, JC Latham from Alabama, too, for them. That wouldn't be bad at all. Kyler Murray's contract. They can probably, if they want to get out of it in 2025 and eat 33 million, they can do so. I'll do that. Right. That's and totally I, I don't a, think I don't think McCarthy's gonna be ready right, right away anyway. So man, that's totally a the rich get richer type move right there at 28, I think. No, 29. That freaking outstanding Burke, yeah. 49ers <laughs> defense gets Denzel Burke. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I would hate Dallas this person right now. <laughs> Who they have Dallas taken? Kellen King, cornerback, Penn State. Hell no. <laughs> oh, the Lions He's get nice, Jaden though. Daniels. That'd be He's crazy. Nice, but do we need a cornerback? <laughs> I mean, you're what? gonna you're gonna get back uh, Diggs, but you're gonna also probably lose. What's his name? <laughs> Who cares? Get rid of Stephon <laughs> Gilmore. He's old. Yeah, Gilmore. <clears throat> and Bland's gonna hey, slide well, right over you, there. <laughs> well, yeah, you but about, you need more than two corners in this league. How do you think about that? What Jaden Daniels to the Lions? That's kind of dirty. Yeah, that has that's, that's interesting. I don't think they'll do that because didn't they pick up Brooker, uh, Hooker last year? Yeah, but he's got that knee problem. No, I mean obviously he was injured, so he's not going to play it this year. But I just you don't draft a quarterback in the first round the next year. You just don't do that. This is yeah, this doesn't. This is a bad pick. They wouldn't do that. What are you talking about? Bengals would do it all the time. Anyway, another point. <laughs> no, they don't. This is the before Burrow Park, come on now. What, what? bro? What? what there doing? it is. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Kool Aid McKinstry. Yeah. I wanted to see where he went. Gotta change the subject. No, I'm interested, bro. Here. What? <laughs> <laughs> this was a fun for first round. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. I see the, the tackle from Penn State. That's who I was talking about with Arizona. I cannot pronounce that name. Oh yeah, we can. It's for sure. Uh, for sh- wait. Oh, yeah, for Shanu, we're not going to do the first name. No, we're just going to 
But then Coleman, yo, Coleman going fourth is wild. He's good, but damn. It's, yeah, I don't even like this mock draft because this draft is not paying attention to who's already on the team. This team is already good at receiver. They would never draft Coleman here. But Brock what Bowers. Brock Bowers a tight end for Georgia. Yeah. Man, what a name. Number 17 for the Colts, Chop Robinson. Chop. <laughs> He's Chop, That's a great name. name. Yeah. <laughs> he would have been. Latavius and Latavius. Where's he going? Also, Malik Neighbors ahead of uh, <clears throat> Munze. That's interesting. Dang. Hey, that's a nice Ohio State freaking representation. Dang. Eagles take a running back. Travion Henderson on the first round. Rumor has it he's coming back because uh, Chip Trainum entered the transfer portal, so he might be coming back for a senior season. Hmm. Um, Marquette smoked my Longhorns tonight, eighty-six to sixty-five. Oh yeah, Marquette well, some shit this season. Game. Marquette some shit this season. Sorry, Texas. And then we got Pro Bowl updates. <laughs> Pro Bowl updates. Well, wish, wishing upon a star right now, trying to be GM, mm-hmm. about to send this to the yeah. I'm over here just playing with some carries. <laughs> having fun. He's going to be doing this for a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's a good chance. So right now, as far as the Pro Bowl updates, it always plays out the top same, vote-getters at each position for mm-hmm. – I go AFC first, then the NFC. The quarterback position, Tua, and then Dak – um, running back M- Mostert and then McCaffrey. Hmm. Florida fucking back. votes, huh? Florida votes matter. Hmm. What? <laughs> uh, fullback, you got in gold for Miami and uh, usage, you check, you check, Kyle, you check, yeah, juice. What the hell. Wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. No surprise there. Uh-huh. C.D. Lamb for the NFC. And then the tight end here, eh, I don't know about this one. AFC, Travis Kelsey. He's having an off year this year. Votes. Votes. Popularity contest. Yep. Yeah, but he's having an off year just for him. He's still doing okay. He's not going to play in the Pro Bowl anyway. Right. You want some skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> On the NFC, you got George Kittle. Uh, the tackles, Armstead from Miami, Williams from San Francisco. Uh, guards, Ziegler from Baltimore, Zach Martin from Dallas. Uh, center, Creed Humphrey from Kansas City, and Jason Kelsey from Philly. Kickers, Dustin Hopkins from Cleveland. Who cares? It's kickers. Brandon Aubrey from Dallas. Watch your mouth. From Dallas, the guy that will laugh at the beginning of the season. <laughs> Take that. Um, I guess this is a long snapper, I guess. A specialist. I'm sorry. Return specialist. Uh, Braxton Berrios from Miami. And Rashid yeah, yeah, yeah. from New Orleans. Shahid. West Shahid. Tahid, the poster boy. Defensive end, you got Miles Garrett, no surprise. Probably going to win the defensive player of the year. Yeah. And Is he close Bosa. to getting that sack record from Jared Allen? I'm not uh, sure. I, I know he's banged up right now, too. No, I don't think so. The leader in the league is Mac right now. Uh, fair enough. At, like, 16. Um, Nick Bosa for the NFC. AFC defensive tackle. Chris Jones from Kansas City. Jovan Hargrove. I'm sorry, Hargrave. Hargrave, yeah, nice. San Francisco. Uh, Outside linebacker, TJ Watt and Michael. Interior linebacker, Roquan Smith and Fred Warner. Cornerback, Jalen Ramsey. Florida votes matter. (laughs) And... (laughs) And Deron Bland. Um, safety, Kyle Hamilton of Baltimore. Reed Blankenship from Philly. 
<laughs> I just think they did it because of the name. <laughs> Philly's votes matter too. <laughs> um, free safety, Geno Stone from Baltimore. Jesse Bates from Atlanta. Yeah, he's big back down there. He is. My name, Honor. my name, my name. We'll talk about a little partner on Will. <laughs> Ryan Stonehouse from Tennessee. Jamie Gillen from New York. Uh, special teams. Duke Riley from Miami. Terrell Burgess from Washington. And long snappers. Blake Ferguson from Miami and Andrew DePola from Miami. What the hell? Hey, right? Andrew DePola, who's he play for? Oh. Damn sure in Miami. That's NFC. My, Miami, man. Miami votes matter, man, since 2000, man. Listen. If play you for know the Vikings. You know. huh. Vikings, man. Vikings, these are leading vote getters, correct? Yes. We got to change these effing votes, everybody, man. You just can't have Floridans um, and Texans um, voting. Come on, Massachusetts. V- vote for Matt Jones. Vote for Ramon Stevenson. No. Come on. No. <laughs> they don't deserve nothing. Juju Smith-Schuster! <laughs> <Trey>. And <laughs> our, our last hobby before we do our picks tonight, um, NFL MVP updates. It's Purdy and Hill and then everybody else. Hold on, hold on. Before you do that, Coach, I just got another update from ESPN. Did you see that thing about that Jags employee? No. What happened? One second. The update says exactly. Former Jags employee accused of stealing more than $22 million from franchise by manipulating its virtual credit card program. Wow. $22 mil? <laughs> Damn. Damn. I got to move out of there. I think I got his number. Hey, yo, I need, I, need, I, need a, I need a million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you better bury that under a tree somewhere. Damn. Cars are after his ass. Oh, man. You got the mafia the mafia about to come, man. Woo! 22 man. I saw that. That's what. That's why when you guys heard me say, no way. And, my, and I jumped off screen real quick. That's what I had read. I was like, holy shit. Either the stupidity of this guy or the balls. <laughs> it could be both. It's probably both. Why not, why not both? both? <laughs> what the cars do to fuck him up? Piss him off. Shit. Damn. You got to be pissed off to steal $22 million? No. Bro, no, you got to be a greedy motherfucker to do that. That part. No, 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 no shit, man. Listen. Yeah, I don't no, know. See, look, no, wait. That's what it starts off as. That starts off as like, all right, I'm 20 bucks. Oh, wow, that worked. Shit, next day, let me try a hundred dollars. All right, nah, hey, nah. hey, hey, listen, listen. Shit, I bet I can get a mill from these. Motherfuckers. Hey, hey, listen, I, I assure you, I assure you, someone who steals 22 million doesn't start at 20. <laughs> no, 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 you know, he starts at 20 million dollars. One shot, kill. <laughs> all she wrote. Hey, that's crazy. Nah, you, you do it all at once, you get caught up. You gotta, you gotta keep it. <laughs> My man's one shot killed it, and then. Not bad. <laughs> Sucks. Now, the top 10 for the MVP voting, number 10 is Miles Garrett. They got Tariq Hill at number nine. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. Um, I don't even care about who's list now. Number, uh, he's number nine at a plus 1,300. Yeah, that's dumb. Uh, Tua, number eight at plus 1,200. Beyond dumb that he's ahead of him. Josh Allen, <laughs> trash Allen. seven at plus five thousand. Lamar Jackson, number six at plus five twenty five. Uh, Patty Mahomes, number five at plus six fifty. CJ Stroud, number four, plus twenty five hundred. The top three, Jalen Hurts, number three at plus 375. Brock Purdy, number two at plus 325. And Dak, number one at plus 350. Oh, yeah, that's why you picked this list. Who's number one? Sorry, I missed it. Who? Matt Jones? Who? 
<laughs> nah, um, Purdy. We all said Purdy maybe, you know, playing the best ball right now. Um, but I'm not mad that Dak's up there. Not only because he's a Cowboys fan, but because he's been balling too. Yeah, did balling. you say Dak was number one? Did you just yeah. say he wasn't balling, Will? I just said he's been balling. Yeah, he's oh, balling. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not, I was put. I was putting in a headphone. I didn't hear anything. Get your, get your popcorn ready, man. Sunday, man. Get your popcorn ready, man. Listen, hey. The numbers that Dak's pulling up. He's the. I'd say he. He's the, the ninth player to put up the numbers he's pulling up right so far. And of those other the previous eight, six of them won the MVP. And the uh, and one of the years that they didn't win it was the year that. Aaron Rodgers and Breeze put up the same same numbers. They finished one and two in both. Uh, but hmm. F for MVP. Let's get to the NFC Championship game. Damn it! Yeah, you <laughs> oh! Mike nah. check. Mike check. Mike 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 mm-hmm. checker. Right, so yo, I told you my man needs to stop those podcasts too, bro. Swear mm-hmm. to God. What? Swear to God. Right. Mike, you better stop talking on these fucking podcasts. Swear to God. But we're getting to that another day. But, yeah. unless, it's, unless it's on this podcast. He can talk on this one. <laughs> well, nah, it's now that we time, want to talk fellas. Right Let's get it. Week 14, man. And we just started. Got five weeks now. Whack. Just, uh, it's the uh, end of the road. Last week, Will went seven and six. Two went eight and five, and Jake and I went ten and three. Hey, I'm doing good for the year. Hold it out for the year. <laughs> <laughs> for the year, Will is one eleven and eighty one. Jake is one fifteen and seventy seven. I'm 120 and 72, and two is 121 and 71. Thank um Jake um for your fabulous week last week. Thank Took for putting the extra game in for you. Hey, yeah, you the man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Ha- Merry Christmas. I think I think the only true reason I got that is because I was the only one that picked Washington. So I'll take it. Hey, you got a free prize, man. Unlike me. Shit. <laughs> Ashley. Jake was doing very, very well up until the late it? games. Yeah, the late games. You, you, you missed on the last three games. God mm. damn it! Philly, Casey, hey. and Jacksonville. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't have faith in Browning. I didn't. And then when it came to Kansas City's game, I was shocked more than anything. But then again, they're at Lambeau. I should have thought differently. And I thought for sure I did. I honestly thought for sure the Eagles had it. So, first game, <laughs> the Patriots at Pittsburgh. It's a bad game. We went from Tom Brady <laughs> versus Ben Roethlisberger to they don't know who that QB is against Mr. Trubisky. <laughs> like this is fucking insane. I was just about to say, this is such a tough game to pick because you got to pick between Mitch Biscuits and Zappy. Who are you taking? Where's it at? Um, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'll just I'll take the home field advantage. You go Pittsburgh. I'm taking Pittsburgh as well. I think J.J. Watt, or not J.J., my bad. T.J. Watt, Toots Cousins, going to eat him alive. Damn man, I want, I, I want I want to take Bill Belichick, man, but it's not giving me no reason to, man. I mean, they have not allowed teams to score, you know, and the Patriots' offense still is scoring, so something's got to something's got to change this week. We're averaging four points in the last three games. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Steelers, man. That's just dreadful. How many points? But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised least, if the Patriots win tomorrow. In the last this, four weeks, they've given up a grand total of 46, pit, of 46 points, which is the lowest in the NFL in the last four weeks. How many of those games have we won, Will? Exactly zero. So us not giving up that many points doesn't matter because our offense can't, can't score. make any. No, so no. I, what I'm saying is at some point, maybe a, good, maybe a good week, you know. This may be the week to do it, but I'm be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they won, but I'm going to take Pittsburgh here. Look, it, it's going to be a Zeke week. That's about it. 
Is we Zeke got Pittsburgh. 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 Pittsburgh will. Yeah. All right. Pittsburgh across the board. Tampa Bay at Atlanta. I got Atlanta. Me too. Welcome to Atlanta where the play is play and we ride on things like every day. I'ma go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Atlanta too. They're picking up a little a little bit of juice. I'm going to Atlanta because they do phenomenal at home. Say again, Jake. I'm Say going to Atlanta. Atlanta. Hold up, sorry. My, my mic's kind of covered up. I'm yeah, going to Atlanta because they do fantastic at home. Okay. Um, Detroit at Chicago. Give me Detroit. Detroit at Chicago. Yeah. Um. Ooh, the Bears got a lot, a lot of advantages coming into this game, like they did last time they played. But the Lions came back and win. I think the Lions survive. What advantage? <laughs> they had an advantage, man. Justin Fields was eating these motherfuckers up the last time they played. Y'all don't remember? That's well, we, we 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 just remember the wins. No, I'm just saying that's one advantage. You said they have a lot of advantages. They have yeah, they have a lot of advantages coming into this game. It's a it's a divisional rivalry game, and. It's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be interesting like the last one is, man. The Bears could pull it out, man. But I'm gonna go lines. No, I'm, I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying they can't win. I just don't think they have any advantages other than being old. <laughs> Justin Fields coming into this game might be better than Jared Goff. Just off the oh. last enough. It's not. <laughs> Everybody got. Detroit, I think. Right? I think just yeah. because it's at home, and I think Justin Fields and DJ Moore both have a good game. Yeah. I still think the lines are gonna overpower them. Well, the, the Lions' defense isn't good, so you always got that part. But the offense covers up the deficiency. Yeah, they just yeah, but the, the the emergence of Detroit's rookies of Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta has just been unreal this year. So yeah, James I James think it's had a score last week, so that's crazy. Yeah, yeah the, the 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 team's just unreal. Young, they're fun to watch, and they're just out there playing ball instead of making it difficult. Um. The Colts at the Bengals. I got Indy on this one. Yeah, I got Indy too, but that kid's playing good. But I think yeah. people are gonna start. They're gonna start getting film on him though. So, nah, I'm, 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 I seen something last week that this team, if they put some poison, some confidence in this quarterback, they can at least be battling the week 16, 17. I'm gonna go Cincinnati in this one. Got you down. <laughs> Tuke, I like your thought process. I think it's too early for them to have the, just the right amount of film on them. So I'm going Bengals as well, especially since it's a home game and Hootay Nation shows out. See that? Come on a second. I think I'm not a... Oh, yeah. Jacksonville at Cleveland. Jacksonville at Cleveland. What a fucking stinker that was night for them. And on top of that, we know Trevor may not miss significant time, but there's a chance he'll miss this game. Ooh, this is tough right here. I'm gonna go yeah. Cleveland on the stretch. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna go Cleveland on the stretch, man. You got you got um NTN um questionable for Sunday too. Like yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna take Cleveland on the slide, but if, if Jackson will do win, I mean, hey, shout out to him, but I'm gonna take Cleveland. That's a lot to overcome. So uh as a- we all know Cleveland's got one of the better defenses in the NFL. Yeah. And I think if we could all go ahead and agree that, well, I, not all, I know for sure me, that C.J. Bathard is one of the worst quarterbacks, back of quarterbacks in the league. So, not good. yeah, Cleveland. Who's riding next on the raid, man? Carolina at New Orleans. I got New Orleans on this one. Yeah, these teams suck. <sighs> I'm going to go Aints. Same. Saints versus who? Panthers. Panthers. Oh, this is my uh, this is my shock pick of the week. I'm going yeah. Carolina. It shocked me when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad pick. It's a division game, so. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of a crap between the two. I only pick I'm New Orleans because they're playing at home. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm only picking Carolina because I want them to have one win so we could be the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I tell you this, any Saints fans that come across this broadcast, if y'all motherfuckers lose. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be bad. 
It's Pack up your bags. bags. <laughs> Bro. You better put the group on mute. <laughs> yeah. <buddy. laughs> yeah. Um, Houston at the Jets. I'm going with Houston. Yeah, me too. Zach Wilson going to take the game? Or is he not going to take the game? He going to take the game. I'm going to take the Texans. That's a pretty interesting match. You got uh, both ex-San Francisco defense coordinators going head to head. Oh, yeah, that's true. And it's crazy that we didn't think the Texans would be the better team coming into this shit. This season. <laughs> not, not at all. Mm-hmm. The Rams at the Ravens. Um. Yeah, the Rams have been failing themselves a little bit. But Stafford about to feel the pain this week. I'm going to go Ravens. I got Baltimore as well. I'm going to go Rams here. Ooh. Rams. Ooh. We're trying to shake up the world. Minnesota hey. at the Raiders. I got Minnesota. Yeah, me too. JJ's going to be back this yeah, week. I got the Raiders. Jesus Christ. What is this game? This game is very evenly matched right here. Believe it or not. Though Jefferson's coming back, and that's a good sign for the Minnesota Vikings. I think Dobbs has just became, you know, what he just what he is. And, and hey, respect to my guy. You know, I sure love the Dobbs, but you know, Nick Foles effect. Hmm. Seattle at San Francisco. Niners. Mmm. Mm. Damn. Woo! Right here. I'm gonna go San Fran though. Damn, as much as I, I want to take Seattle right here, I'm gonna take San Fran. Ah, I got San Fran as well, but I wouldn't be hurt if Seattle wins. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo at Kansas City. Oh, we get one of these matchups again, man. Oh uh, shit. Oh man, shit. I'm gonna take Buffalo. Yeah, not a bad pick. I want to take Buffalo too. Ah, Do it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take Buffalo. I'm gonna find me and we're gonna take Buffalo here. Ah shit, this is tough right here. Patty Mahomes been busting Josh Allen's ass forever. Oh. <laughs> <It is> stupid. <laughs> and it's like as much as you think you can overturn it, it never happens, right? <laughs> you know what I say? I got a son, so the son some he think he probably could beat my ass when he get older. Hell no. I'm still that old pop. I'm still busting your ass. Yeah, I That's really wonder I, w- I really wonder if Josh even like if he has a, an alone moment and thinks I maybe I just can't beat them. Because my man had the win with 13 seconds left and still didn't beat them. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. That's just wild. Who you say you had, Will? Jeez. Also, a f- uh, fun little fact. Uh, Josh Allen was the, that that game was the reason why they changed the overtime rule, and since that <laughs> rule changed, and since zero and six in, in OT since that rule. Changed. <laughs> oh man, that's karma for you, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let bitch in the wine and they did. Um, Denver at the Chargers. I got Denver. Mm. Jake took Denver as well. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Chargers in this one. Mm, Here we go. Shit. Nah, I'm not. Change my mind. I can't. I can't be mad at my Broncos after a loss last week to a team that they should have lost to. I'm gonna go. Let's ride. Let's we stop the streak, baby. Yeah, I'm going gotcha Chargers. Down. Hopefully, I don't regret it. Chargers. Got you down, Will. <laughs> Philly at Dallas. Give me Dallas. Yeah, yeah listen. Cowboys in the wood. I'm going to say this this week. You know how I do it, man. Yo, if y'all let the Eagles beat y'all, every Eagles fan that I see on the street, I'm knocking you out straight up on dogs. My Cowboys lose the Eagles this week. Every Eagle fan I see, I don't care, I'm knocking you out. Okay, I can't lose to these dudes. I, no. They gave us the game in Philly, and we lost it. Eagles win. Will and Jake took Philly. Of course they did. Patriot motherfuckers. Of course they took Good job. Of course they took Philly. Of Good course. Job. That's like us taking, that's like us saying we're going to pick the other team over the Patriots. I respect mm-hmm. their picks. Mm-hmm. I respect them. But guess what, fellas? Enjoy right. the popcorn Sunday. Enjoy the popcorn Sunday. Mm-hmm. And come back to us Monday. Mm-hmm. And give us all the reasons why you want to give us the reasons why. Mm-hmm. We'll find out Monday. We'll find out Monday how these picks go, man. But overall, we'll man, out. Like I said, <laughs> we are <laughs> Dude, I, 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 hate, 
Tuke, I hate to bring up this very like valid point that everybody knows, but why wouldn't you pick against the Patriots? Everyone knows they're going to lose anyway. Yeah, they got no, 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 no. I picked against the Patriots even when they supposed to win. Yeah. That was my point. That, that, that was my point. You know what I'm saying? I, I, like, I, 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 I would I, expect y'all to pick the Eagles over the Cowboys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I even if the Patriots were good and they were playing, like, say, Peyton Man and Colts, I'm going to take the Colts. Like, that that type of, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. nah, you know, man, it's going to be a good game. Hopefully Sunday, man, and, and, and keep continuing the, the, the pedal if you're a Cowboys fan. Fuck the Eagles. Um, my let me see Tennessee at Miami. That's Miami. the Monday night game. Yeah, one of them. There's two Monday night yeah, games. There's two. Yeah. Oh shit, for real? Yeah. Oh, at the man. same time, both during at our podcast. What assholes? Time, at the same day. Sorry. <laughs> one game might be a blowout. It came out. One Dolphins. game might nah. None of these games gonna be blowouts. I got the Dolphins. <laughs> Dolphins, okay. The number one seeded Dolphins. Well, Anybody going to New York over Green Bay? No. Because I am. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going Green Bay. Don't tell me the veto is starting for another game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> took, you took Miami, right? Um, I didn't even take a pick. Um, shit. Blowout. Um, I'm going to take Miami, though. Shit. Everybody got Miami. And took, you say you got Green Bay? I'm going to take Green Bay. I got Green Bay as well. I'm gonna take Jordan Love in the crew. Chile Wheel. Jay took Green Bay. Everybody took Green Bay. We locked in, fellas. Let's get it. About to go undefeated. This. You want to bet twenty dollars? You don't. Nope. <laughs> 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 Bro, this house is a dead zone. We can go better record. <laughs> and that's easy for you. <laughs> that's cold. <laughs> nah, let me stop, man. Oh. <laughs> Who y'all got for shout out? Shout out to everybody who joined in the chat, which was like none of y'all. I think Chris <laughs> and Dale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two people. This what are y'all doing on a damn Wednesday night? <laughs> not a goddamn thing. I tell you exactly what they're doing on a Wednesday night. It's hump day. They humping. They better be. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> nah, they ain't humping. Y'all have fun humping, man. Y'all on poor humping shit. Shout out to y'all. Hey, y'all come. Hey, man, that's that XNX. Shout out to everybody tuning in tonight. Real talk, man. Appreciate everybody. You know what I'm saying? That tuned in all this week, man, for a fabulous <laughs> parlay. Yeah. Try, to land days, huh? try to land the try to land the plane. Motherfuckers out here passing over the here. Heaven. Can't fly in the air. We hiring um Snoop Dogg as our um pilot. Seriously. <laughs> oh man. Shout out to you fellas, man. Always fun. Shout out to everybody, man. Real talk, man. We couldn't do this without you guys. Yeah. You guys couldn't see us without us being here. So um, at the same time. Man, just describe vision. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> I wish everybody well for the rest of the week. Um, yeah. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay, warm. stay warm, man. It's getting cold in Boston. Holy cold. shit out here, man. <laughs> I have fun with all that up there. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna bring that shit right to you. Yes, we are. We're gonna be in the 60s a couple times in the next yeah. couple of days, but that's not good. Tell As me. we mentioned earlier, coach, that's not good. Yeah, it's gonna be like 59 tomorrow in Cincinnati, but we're dropping down to the Fuck 20s up. tonight. This sucks. I just walked right past my car. So that's, that's very nice. Jake of you. Come on, I'm it is very Jake of me. <laughs> Shout out to everybody, man. We appreciate you hanging out with your boys. We completed another great week. You yeah. of hanging out with y'all, doing a damn thing. Thank y'all as always. Be back, be there, or be square. That's how we do it. Number love. Appreciate y'all. Find this podcast and others on STWFTV, the podcasting network, wherever you get podcasts. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. 
This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.